Hey friends, welcome to Holy Week. Uh, over this week, I'm going to be doing a series of videos taking a look at the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and what happened during Jesus' last uh, week here on earth as he, uh, as he prepared to sacrifice his life on the cross for us. And so uh, yesterday being Sunday, uh, that's our holy day that we appreciate here in the Christian church. Uh, but that wouldn't have been the holy day for the Jews. Uh, theirs would have been uh, Friday night to Saturday. Um, that would have been their Sabbath. And so for our Sabbath, we talk about Palm Sunday. And so we talked about that a lot over the last two Sundays as well. What that day meant and how Jesus triumphantly entered into Jerusalem at this high point. And uh, if Jesus uh, was walking next to Jerusalem and Jerusalem was a beehive, he kind of nudged it pretty hard on that day on Palm Sunday and uh, really made his presence known that this king had just walked into town and people were excited to talk about that. So uh, it was a big declaration about Jesus's authority and that uh, he was not making it quiet anymore. He's not telling his disciples to shh, don't tell, don't, don't tell everybody this. Instead, uh, we want everybody to know now. It was a big deal. And so on Monday, today, Jesus returns for more, uh, this time uh, to declare the failure of God's people, that we have not kept up our end of the covenant of being in relationship with God. God said, I want to be your God and I want you to be my people. And the people are more focused on the rules uh, or the governing uh, body of the, the religious leaders are more interested in talking about the rules than they are about being in a righteous relationship with God. And so Jesus is trying to set this all straight, right? And so much of what the Gospels tell us about this Monday centers on the theme of Jesus's authority and why he's able to do what he's able to do. Well, he's the son of God. He is God incarnate. So he's allowed to tell us how, how these things are, or what's, what's right and what's wrong. And so we have this account for Monday in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We don't have anything in John in particular. Matthew is about 300 words. Uh, Mark is about 200 words and Luke is about 80 words. And so I wanna to read to you uh, selections from those three gospels or those two gospels on Matthew and Mark. And I want you to hear that there is some variation and difference between the two of them. That's intentional, uh, not, not because of they were trying to do something to uh, hoodwink people or to uh, lie to people, uh, but these are accounts of different people uh, talking about from multiple perspectives. And so I appreciate the fact that the stories are not exactly the same. That would insinuate a collusion uh, that the people, that the authors were trying to fool people. But instead, because there's slight differences or, or little nuances that are different, uh, it tells me that these are authentic uh, narrators who are telling us about the story. So I'm gonna to read to you uh, from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 22. Uh, if you want to read on your own, the one scripture that I'm not going to read, that's from the Gospel of Luke, which we've been reading the last few months here. That's Luke 19, 45 to 48. It's really super short. But here's Matthew 21, 12 to 22. This is Jesus at the temple. This is Monday. This is the day after his triumphant entry. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove all out who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables and the money changers and the benches and those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. 14, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But then the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did. And the children shouted in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Oh, yeah. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you read? And then so now he's quoting from the lips of children and infants. You, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out to the city of Bethany, where he spent the night, which is where uh, Lazarus, Mary and Martha are from. They're from Bethany. And so Jesus is probably staying with his friends. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it and found nothing on it except leaves. And then he said, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. And when the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. And Jesus replied, truly, I tell you, if you have faith and no doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but you can also say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And now here's from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 12 through 25. Again, slightly different, uh, and that's a good thing. 
this is, again, Jesus cursing the fig tree and clearing the temple in slight reverse order. The next day, as they're leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, which that's interesting. Jesus was hungry. Uh, the Gospel of Luke frequently talks about the humanity of Jesus. And so uh, Jesus was human. He was hungry, right? Seeing in the distance a fig tree leaf, uh, a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. And when he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season of figs. And then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts, began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches and those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, is it not written? My house would be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of, uh, for robbers. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus' the disciples went out of the city, out of Jerusalem, and in the morning they went along and they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed is withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says this to the mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt their heart, but believe what they will have said will happen. It will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours and you will stand praying. And if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so your father in heaven may forgive your sins. Interesting for what we know is going to happen to Jesus this week, that he's still preaching about forgiveness and he's still preaching about love. And he's still trying to, to help people understand the unconditional love that he has for children. And even though he's holding people accountable for what they're doing in the temples and throwing them out, he uh, still has love and care for them. And even though the fig didn't provide a, a fig tree for or the fig tree didn't provide a fig for him, um, he still is aware that he, not all the trees need to be cursed, but this one, uh, this one is symbolic and representative of the Jewish people. But they don't, or they are also not producing fruit. And so maybe that's the parallel between these two stories: is uh, the people and the fig tree as well that they're not producing fruit. And so Jesus is asserting his authority and helping them understand that uh, there's something more at play here. And so tomorrow, for Tuesday, we're going to hear about how the Pharisees, the Sadducees, uh, the Sanhedrin, how they are coming around Jesus. And they're questioning, why do you have this authority? Or why do you think you can speak the way that you speak? Or why do you claim to be who you claim to be? Uh, now that you're making it really clear. And so we'll talk about that tomorrow on Tuesday. Be blessed.